Hello everybody, this is Julia from Just One More Card and today I have a fun project to help Altenew celebrate their fourth, fourth anniversary with a block hop. And uh, there are a lot of amazing crafters. It's a block hop that goes over several days. There's a lot of prizes to win, so check out my own blog post. You will find the link in the video description below for more information. Here are the supplies that I'm going to be using today to create a very sparkly birthday card. First off, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to be using the Botanical Garden stamp set by Altenew. It's one of their older stamp sets, but I just love it because the images are just so gorgeous. For a sparkly card, you'll need glitter. I have a lot of Elizabeth Craft Design glitter and Nouveau glitter. Um, they are both very fine glitters. It doesn't matter which one you use, the properties of them are the same. I'm going to be using the Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter because I have a huge tub of it. Um, I love to use glitter, so I you know I, I really have a lot. I prepared a card base and a panel into which I cut an opening, and I have this double-sided adhesive tape which I'm going to put directly onto my card base because the glitter needs to stick to something, right? So I'm just um, uh, peeling off the backing paper here. I'm just gonna hold it like this so I can hold on to something without getting my hands into the adhesive. And I'm going to use the frame to help me position um, the adhesive on the actual um, um, card base. Next up, I peeled up the um, the paper so now the um, adhesive is exposed and you can see here down in the corner it didn't work out right I pulled back some of the adhesive so I just cut another strip and I'm just putting it on there so there's if something doesn't go as planned while you're doing your crafting don't worry you can usually fix it okay now that I have everything covered with adhesive that needs to be covered with adhesive I'm just pouring my glitter on there I'm just letting it run down there and I'm doing this as often as necessary until I have all the adhesive covered with glitter now the glitter can still come off so I'm using my finger to rub it into the adhesive this will do two things it will remove the excess adhesive and when I rubbed it it will really stick and it will also be super shiny it's really hard to see here um, but you need to rub it afterwards, otherwise, you know, it's just gonna be messy. But once you've rubbed it, it won't come off anymore. Now I'm going to do my stamping. And I'm positioning the stamp here. I used the frame um, there to help me position the stamp where I needed it to go. And I'm using my stamp press here simply because I might need to double stamp and I actually ended up having to double stamp. I'm also using my favorite things, hybrid licorice uh, black ink. Um, this is the only ink from all the inks that I've tested, from all the black inks that I've had, which will not smear when you um, go over it with the, with the markers. If you want to learn more about how to use glitter and color on it um, in your card projects, I have a new Altenew class coming up, by the way, by the end of April, where this will be one of the topics that I will cover extensively. Now I'm using my Stabilo markers for coloring and you can see that I have a scrap piece of paper here where I just scribble off the markers so I can get a clean color. Um, the Stabilo markers are water-based which means they remain wet quite some time so it's really easy to blend them and because the lighter color picks up the darker color when you blend them um, you need the scrap paper to just clean off the marker. It doesn't hurt your marker at all picking up the color. Um, since I'm coloring on glitter and the glitter is kind of coarse, um, I am using the inexpensive Stabilo markers uh, because they are super affordable, at least here in Germany. They only cost a few, like I don't think they're even one euro a piece or something. They are less than that. Um, so <clears throat> um, should I damage the tip? You can see the beautiful glitter. Um, should I damage the tip while coloring on the glitter? It's not really going to, you know, it's not a catastrophe. I did use Copic markers in the past to color on glitter, but there was a difference in the technique. When I use Copic markers, I just dabbed the tip of the marker onto the glitter. So like, like not moving it over the glitter horizontally, I just vertically dabbed down onto the glitter. Right here, what I'm doing is I'm actually moving the tip of the marker across the glitter surface. And because I'm doing that, I'm not using my Copics. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind using them. 
um, but when you basically rub the tip of your marker across the glitter you might damage it so you really want to use inexpensive um, supplies. I would recommend anything that's water based um, because it will remain wet and that will allow you to, um, uh, to move it around a little bit. You can see here I'm using a blender pen from Stampin' Up. I think Tombow also has a blender pen and that just helps to move the color around without introducing additional colors. And I'm cleaning that one off to the side as well. And you can see here how easy it is to color on the glitter and you get this beautiful sparkly effect which I just, oh, I, I love sparkle, I love shimmer. I know, I know, I just can't help myself. <laughs> Here decided to mix it with some yellow simply because I just you know, I just wanted to have a very warm color in there as well and I'm always cleaning up my blender pen off to the side to make sure that I'm not um, introducing too much dark color into the light areas. You could also see that the ink feathers a tiny little bit which means um, it's if you like would make a stroke on the glitter a color like a stroke with the with the tip of the pe pen um, it wouldn't be one straight line. It would start to feather off to the side a little bit, so it looks a little bit fuzzy. Um, that's just a side effect of coloring on this medium, which you should be aware of. That also means that you should be uh, careful when you apply the color. If you apply too much, it's going to feather more. But you can see here by quickly coloring, it looks absolutely perfect. I created this card in under 26 minutes and that includes like literally everything showing you the supplies in the beginning um putting down the 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 the, the frame here stamping the sentiment which is from the label of stamp set by Altenew, cutting out the sentiment so everything was done in under 26 minutes so this is a card that you can create quite quickly it looks pretty awesome and when I thought that I was done, and I was just uh, I was using foam tip to apply the sentiment and then some glossy accents here to make sure that this piece would stick to the frame. When I thought I was done, I realized it looked well, it looked great, but it missed my dots. I missed my dots. So of course I had to come in with a black marker and just add a few dots for interest. I know, I just, I couldn't help myself. I know, I know. But I still feel it turned out quite fine. Here you can see the gorgeous detail and how well the My Favorite Things ink held up to um, 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 to the color that I put on top of it and the amazing detail that you have in these all to new images. I absolutely love it. They are so graphical, so beautiful. They are perfect for no line coloring, for this kind of coloring. I absolutely love it. So, as I said, if you like this video, leave me a comment or a thumbs up and don't forget to check out my blog post to learn more about the block hop that is going on because there's prizes to win that you don't want to miss. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye!